Hello and welcome. In this training, I'll be showing you how to design an Excel template that computes the precision using some of the yield digit method. In our previous training, I showed you how to design an Excel template that computes the precision using the straight line depreciation method. I'll just show you what we did in our previous day. This is a template we designed, and this computes the precision using the straight line method. The same format, but the formula used in computing straight line depreciation is different from what we use while designing the Excel template that computes the precision using some of the year's digits. So you will observe that we have a fixed amount all through the useful life of the year. It's fixed depreciated amount, 24,000 all through, based on the variables we've inputted here. This is the straight line depreciation. So when you come to this sum of the year's digits, you notice that the depreciation amount is high it has the, the first year has the highest amount and the, it keeps decreasing as the year goes by, right? So that's the difference between the straight line and some of the year's digits. So I'll be showing you how to design this. But before we go in, first of all, what is the precision? The precision is the reduction in the value of the tangible fixed assets due to maybe usage. The asset has, is obsolete, is no longer in vogue. Maybe the time you've used that asset. Imagine you bought an asset five years ago for 500000 and you want to sell it this year, 2022. You won't be selling it as 500000 You'll be selling it quite less than 500000 So the difference with the costs you purchased it five years ago and the amount you're selling it, the difference is what we call the depreciation amount. Right. Just as I stated earlier, some of the years digits has a high depreciation amount in the first year and decreases as the year goes by. And in designing this template, we're going to be using the following function. I use the following function. SYD function is the function used in calculating the precision using some of the year's digit method. We also made use of the count function, the row function, the year function, if function, font formatting function. It is important to know that this template is designed to capture assets with a maximum useful life of 20 years. So, Let's go in. If you want the completed version of this template, all you need to do is to give this video a thumbs up, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and drop a comment in the comment section with your email, and you'll get this template right into your inbox. Right. So let's go in, and we'll be designing what we have right here. So to design this, we'll open a new worksheet to design this exact template. So first of all, We'll open a new worksheet. Here's our worksheet. So what first of all, what we've been doing is that we'll, co we'll copy the entire values here. We'll just copy, copy the entire value, just the value itself, copy it and paste into the cell. So we select the paste as value. So that's just what we want to. So paste as value. All right. So stopping at row 30. That's where the template is stopping. So what, what we need to just do after copying this and pasting, so I'll just select from this point to this point, and you give it an all border formatting. Give it an all borders formatting, right? So this is where the template stops. So I can now increase each of the column to, this is quite wide. First of all, me wrap this this. I think we'll wrap it. This two should be wrapped. Wrap this so you increase the column to the desired size. Wrap this and increase the column. Good. Now, after wrapping, just select this entire and give it a bold look. All right. Then center it. So we we'll have to increase the front size of this area. This is 11. We'll make it 14 just for much visibility. Then give it a number formatting to this point. Give it a number formatting, comma separated, and reduce the decimal. Good. This is okay. So we come here to we do the same thing. Give it all borders. Give this. This two should be border. But before we do it borders, we want to like merge it across. So you merge it across. Good. And you now give it borders. So we'll increase this. We'll increase this to 14 also for more visibility. This is 
number, make it number and reduce the, is also number, this is date, give it a short date formatting, short date formatting, good. So we have a red font formatting here and we are good to go. Right, we are good to go. So I can just increase this, good. So we are good to go. So here it's, we gave it to bold and we increase it to 16. Good, so this is okay. So we already have, okay, let's increase this, make it, I don't like the way it's looking. Okay, this is okay. So we can now, let me increase this just to make the columns wider. I'll center this, center this entire, and also center the Y. The center formatted good. So we'll now put a fill formatting. This is it, or a lighter one. This is okay. So here we go. Our data is ready. So if you notice, we disabled the grid lines. So you just go to view and disable it so that it will give you see it's now looking very unique and cool. So what we need to do now is to format it's now automate this automate the entire template so that when you impute all this it will just fill automatically just as we have it here if i now change this to five you see immediately so whatever if i change this to 2020 let's say this is 2000 2000 so it's just automate if you change this now to 600,000 everything just automates automatically. So we'll, that's what we'll be doing, designing all this area and making it automated, all right? So first we'll start with the period. I'll be using the row function. So equals to row, we'll be using this first row. So just for you to understand, good. So you see the first row gives me one, and that is what I want. So if you fill it downwards to this point, you see you have to, okay, we have to stop from one to 20. Okay, so this is where we have to stop. So we can just clear this formatting here. You come here and clear formats. Okay, just clear all, good. So we stop at row 28. This is where our template stops. So you see immediately, we put in the row function, everything filled, but we would like to make it dynamic and automated, meaning that if we put 10 years here, it should stop at 10 years. If we put 15 years, it should stop at 15. And to do that, we'll be wrapping this function in an if function. So say if, if this row, all right, if this row is greater than the cell, you put F, Four, make it absolute. If it is greater, return an empty cell. All right. Or if it is not, just return the row function back to me. We didn't put the row. You have to write the row. The row function one. Then close the brackets. Good. So you can see the formula here. This is it. So that for better understanding, we say if this row if row one is greater than this, give me an empty cell. If it is not, return this. So we've already imputed the formula. So what we need to do is to fill it down. Just use your fill handle to fill it down to the last cell. Watch what happens. You see, it stops at 10 because we put in 10 years here. So if I put five years, it stops at five. So this column is automated. Let's move to the next column, which is the year column. And for the year column, the first thing is to use the year function equals to the year. We just want the year aspect of this date to be here. So you just say year of this date. And it will give you 2017. So for the second cell, if it's 2017, the second one should be 2018. Say equals to this cell plus one, plus one. And we have 2018. So if I fill it downwards to this point, I'll be getting to the last year, which is 2036, right? So, but what I want is to automate this year column to stop at the point we have this, that's the number of useful life of the assets. If it's five years, it should stop at the year five and should not 
continuum, right? So we're automating it by wrapping an if function and a row function around this formula. So what we'll do is we'll start with the cell because this one won't be automating it that way because this is the fourth cell. We just want the year here. But for these other ones, we'll need to automate it. So first, we'll just wrap the if and the row function. If this row... So because we already have, we are not starting from here. This is row one. So we'll start, we'll say row two. If this row, right, if this row is greater than, is greater than this is useful life, make it absolute. If it is greater, return an empty cell. But if it is not, just add B9 plus one. It will give us the next year. All right, so you close the bracket. So with this, our formula is automated and dynamic. So we just fit it downwards. And here, here we go. That's it. So we've automated this. So if we make this 10 years now, what will happen? We see. So this is what we want. So let's go to the opening value. The opening value of this asset, which is the cost of purchasing this asset, is this amount. So you just say equal to and link it to the cell. That is the opening value for the first year. Now, the second year opening value will be the closing value of the first year. And we have not gotten to this point of imputing formula. So what I'll do is to hold on on this cell and let's continue. When we are done, we'll come back to the cell. So the depreciated amount. Now to calculate depreciated amount using some of the years digits, we'll use this function, the SYD. As I stated earlier, SYD, what's the cost? This is the cost. So we'll make everything absolute by pressing cell F4. F4. Then what's the salvage value? Select this, press F4. What's our life? This is the life, this is cell. Press F4. And what's the period? This is the period. Then close the bracket. Good. So you see, we have it well design good so because this particular this it stops at year 10 that's why it, we are having this value so we want to automate and make it dynamic in the sense that at if it's 10 years it stops at 10 years if it's five years it stops at five years so first of all we'll wrap the if function around it so we say if if a9 is greater than this useful life, that's C5. So we'll make C5 absolute by pressing F4. We'll return an enter cell. But if it is not, it should return this particular formula, the SYD formula, and close the bracket. All right, that's the fourth automation we'll give to it. So this is it. Good. So we are good to go. So if this a9 is greater than this. If it is greater, it should return an empty cell. But if it's not, return the E function. I also wanted to automate this formula again by wrapping an if and count function. Assuming this is an empty cell, assuming this is an empty cell, what should it do? So we we'll say if and count, we count this cell. If we count this cell A9, and if it is less than, if it is less than one, meaning that is zero, it is an empty cell. If it's less than one, so just return an empty cell. But if it is not, then you go ahead and test all this and return the value thinking. Close this and here we go. So we have this. Good. Our formula is automated. Here we go. So now let's go and calculate the at accumulated depreciated amount. Accumulated depreciation is more like a running balance. First year is 87,273. The second year, you add the first year and the second year to get the second year accumulated depreciation. So this you just say equals to sum, right? We are summing this to D9, but the first D9 will make it absolute by pressing F4. You just select it and press F4, good. So you have the dollar before the column and the row, then close the bracket and enter. Good. So if you fill the formula down, watch and see.
good so you see all right so but we want to make it automated so we'll be wrapping the if and the count function around it so we'll wrap the if function and the count function so you count a9 if a9 is less than if a9 is less than one so, so you and you can't sell A9 and it is less than one, return an empty cell. But if it is not, just sum this and return it. Good. So you can now close the bracket. Good. So we have this. You can now fill it downwards. Let's see what happens. Good. This is what we want. So if it is, if it's if it's 10 years, it stops at that 10 years. So we are moving, we are moving gradually. So we are done with this column. Let's now move to the closing book value. And the closing book value just equal to, very simple, this minus the depreciated amount. And there you go. Good. This minus this. And there you go. So you feel downwards. You feel downwards. So this now, this is the closing balance for year one. It will now become the opening balance for year two. So you just see equals to F9 and here you go. So, but we need to automate this area. I also need to automate this area. First of all, let's automate this area. So what we need to do, we'll wrap the if and the count function around this formula. First, let's wrap the if and the count function. So we count A9, if it is less than one, return an empty sum. Or if it is not, just return CD minus D9, right? So this is it. So you fill it downwards. Good. So we are good to go. So because we've not yet imputed this here, so we need to also make this automated. That the opening value column will also have to make it automated. The first one we linked it to, the second one will be the closing value of the first year. That's why the second year opening book value, it will be the closing book value of the first year. So we want to automate this formula. So we'll be wrapping the if function around it. So we say if this F9, if the F9 is less than or equal to this salvage value, make it absolute. If it is, just return an empty cell. If it is not, return back F9 and close the bracket. Good. So we can now fill it downwards. Good. So you see, our formula is good to go. Now we have our period, year, opening value, opening book value, depreciated amount, accumulated depreciated amount, and the closing book value. So if you change this now to 15 years, Wow. So you see, it stops at 15 years. So this is how you design an automated Excel template that computes depreciation using the sum of the years digit method. If you want to get a completed version of this template, give this video a thumbs up, like this video, hit the subscribe button and drop in the comment section your feedback and your email address. And I'll get this completed template sent to you into your inbox. Right. So thanks for staying on through this training. I believe you've gotten value. I'll see you in the next training. Bye for now.